Ni no Kuni 2 seems linear at first, but a few hours in and it opens up into a magnificent world filled with quests to conquer, tasks to accept, and probably a handful of questions. Here are 9 things Ni no Kuni 2 doesn't tell you that might help you out on your journey to build a wonderful kingdom. Understanding the equipment markers can be a bit of a challenge at first. Weapons have both sword and star images. The sword icon notes physical attack power. The star reflects magic attack power. Armor has a shield and hexagon. The shield reflects the physical defense, whereas the hexagon shows the magic defense. Each weapon also has a charge build grade. The better the letter grade, the faster it will charge. This comes in handy when using magic attacks. Once the Zing gauge reaches 100%, magical attacks will be amplified, sometimes charged entirely with greater attack power. Every weapon has a color-coded name. This coincides with the quality of the weapon, indicated by the Gold Star Badge. The higher quality weapon or armor is, the higher this number will be, as well as the item's color. Pieces of a quality between 1 and 5 will be noted with white text and a badge reflecting their numerical quality. Blue equipment has a quality of 6 to 9. Armor and weapons marked with red text range from 10 to 14 in quality. Lastly, any equipment with a quality of 15 or higher will be shown in purple. There is no distinctive difference in terms of these rankings. In general, weapons with a higher quality will bear greater stats. Additionally, weapon and armor skills are stronger the higher the quality of the equipment is. Each piece of equipment also has a fraction next to a hammer icon. This denotes the number of improvements performed over 10, the maximum amount of improvements possible. Lastly, each piece of equipment has a star rating out of 5. This simply reflects the rarity of each item. A piece of equipment with 5 stars is harder to find in the world and requires rarer resources to craft in Evermore. A 1 star item is much easier to find in the world and requires easy to find materials in order to craft. During the heat of battle, it is inevitable for the AI-controlled companions to get into trouble. But don't just accept this. You can swap between all three members of your party while in the heat of battle. Just press up or down on the D-pad to switch between characters at any time. As you gain party members, only three will be able to participate in battles. This may cause concern about how much playtime each character gets in order to distribute EXP properly. But don't fret! Any party member outside of battle still receives EXP from that fight. So, if one team composition works really well for an extended period of time, don't worry about other members getting left in the dust. They'll keep up. As soon as Evan and the crew found the Kingdom of Evermore, it's time to get to work. Although building and maintaining the Kingdom may seem like a glorified minigame, the systems and structures of Evermore support the rest of the gameplay entirely. The Outfitters and Weapon Workshop allow you to build and upgrade weapons, and other establishments like the Verdant Farm allot you materials of all sorts. Of course, the Higglery is the only way to upgrade Higglies, and even lets you brew up some from scratch. However, it doesn't stop there. Upgrading the Kingdom to level 2 and level 3 allows party members to gain more experience, skirmishes to go much more swimmingly, item accumulation to become a breeze, and more. Dedicating a lot of time to checking in on the Kingdom will not go to waste, so don't forget how important it is. Construct the Evermore Spellworks as soon as you can once you've found it Evermore. You'll learn more powerful attack spells and spells that help you explore the land. For example, those locked purple chests you've probably stumbled upon? The Spring Lock spell is the only thing that can open them, and you can only learn it through the Spellworks building after leveling it up. You may be in a hurry, but don't miss out on side quests. You can tell if someone has a quest for you by an exclamation point above their head on the map. Many of these will earn you a reward plus a new citizen for Evermore. Recruiting and employing more citizens not only increases efficiency, it also boosts the rate at which Kingdom Guilders are acquired, so completing side quests is definitely essential for smooth sailing in the main storyline. Don't fret if you've never heard of an item needed to complete a side quest. It may be that you simply can't find it until you've already completed a different side quest. Check your facilities at Evermore, and if the material you need can't be gathered there, consider continuing on your journey and you'll happen across the item eventually. Swift Solutions is an easy-to-miss establishment accessible as soon as Hydropolis and is found in every major city in Nino Kuni 2 afterwards. Here, you can accept a number of various errands. Usually, the errands are very simple and earn you tokens, which can only be used at Swift Solutions. However, these tokens can be redeemed for incredibly hard-to-find items in the open world and even unlock quests to recruit citizens to the Kingdom of Evermore. After Chapter 2, your party will begin encountering tainted monsters in the open world. These monsters are incredibly hard to kill, but offer great rewards. Not only will you earn items, equipment, and guilders, but you'll also gain huge amounts of EXP. These monsters are distinguished by the large purple ring encircling them and can be taken on at your leisure. Sometimes you may find these monsters too strong to take on when you first meet them, but don't be deterred. Keep track of them all in the Tainted Monsters section of the library and return when you've grown. 
For more on Nino Kuni 2, don't miss our review, or check out the five biggest changes in the sequel. And for everything else, stick with us here at IGN. Well, now, would you look at that? <laughs>